You are the fire. Dum, dum, da, dum, 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 da, dum. This is Brandy. Another talk show service. Brandy, you see, has been on her way to the altar four different times. Every single time, her boyfriend, Eric, backs out. Now, her friends and family say, you better forget him. He is never going to marry you. She says, look, I'll give him one more chance or we're through. Do you think we can have a wedding after all? Well, we're set. We've got the flowers. We've got the cake. We've got the rings. We've got a minister standing by. She says she's given him an ultimatum. You know what? Today, I'm making the ultimatum. We're ready to have a wedding. Is he ready to finally commit? Today's his last chance. You don't want to miss this. All right. <laughs> Do we have Eric hidden? Robin, do we have Eric hidden somewhere where we can bring him out in a few minutes? Okay. And we're also going to hear from Brandy's sister, Jessica, and her friend, Destiny, who may have different ideas. And as I said, this is a talk show service. Today, we're going to talk to people who've uh, contacted us. Their mate will not commit. Now, I don't know if anyone should commit. We're going to stay neutral on this, all right? But whatever works for you is going to work for us. Now, you've planned your wedding four different times, and you're still not married. Not married, so. What's going on? Eric just backs out. Every time we get to the altar, we're there. We're almost there. I'm so close. And he's like, no, wait, wait, I don't want to do it. Well, tell me about the backing out. Give me one, two, three, four. First time? First time, 1993, and we were going to get married in December. But I had just found out I was pregnant, and Eric said, well, let's wait. Let's wait and see when the baby's born, how things are going. And I said, okay, okay, we can wait until then. That makes sense. So we waited. The baby was born in June. We were supposed to get married in September. September rolls around, and Eric says, well, I don't know. I'm not sure if I want to do it now. So I'm like, well, I'll give you a little bit more time. You know, I know things have changed a lot after the baby was born. We'll see how things are working out. Now things are different, so we'll, we'll check it out. So December comes around. I said, we're getting married now. This is it. We're going to get married. And he said, okay, we're going to get married. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm, I'm getting all these bride magazines and invitation things to see what kind you want. And then he says, well, let's just wait till the new year. We can have a nice, fresh start, and everything will be good. So I talked to his parents, start to his family, and his family's going to come down from Pennsylvania for Easter. So we're going to get married Easter night of 1995. And two weeks before the wedding, I had had my dress. He picked out his tux. I had the minister and everything. You had the minister, I had the, the minister dress, reserved, the everything. tux, the whole, everything? The whole thing. And he says, well, I just want to wait. Because at the time, we were living with his parents, and I was pregnant again. And he said, let's wait to see how things are. Now, wait a minute. You, I know. You've had two children with this two man. Two children. Two children. You have been living with him all these years. Mm -hmm. And he's backed out each one of four times. Yeah. All right, so what are you going through after all these disappointments? It's just so humiliating to tell my family, we're going to get married, you know, we really love each other, and this is what's going to happen. We're going to get married, and we have a wonderful family, and it's just going to be perfect. If you plan four and weddings, I don't, know if I, could, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I could stand it. They said, there, there's no way he's going to commit to you. If he wanted you, he would have had you a long time ago. Now he's just got to, to take care of you. Honey, tell me what you want. Not what mom wants, not what he wants. What do you want? I want a commitment. I want to be married. I want to, this is what I believe in my heart is right, and my religion tells me it's right, and I believe that with all my heart. I want this to make my family complete. And he says no. I, you know, he's always got some excuse. He says, I want to marry you, but then he comes back around and says no. But you're living together. We're living together. He supports me. He supports my sons. I'm not working now because I just had my other baby six weeks ago. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Guys, hold on. <laughs> All right. They want to know why you're still with him. I love him very much, and I know that he loves me. I think she has a right to love him very me, much. But he's scared, All right. he's scared of commitment. Okay. 
You have given I think. him. He won't tell me for sure. You've given him your final before you ever came to us. You gave him your ultimatum. Yes. What was your ultimatum? I told him by December I want his commitment. I want to be married, or I'm leaving. All right. He. Yeah. This is his last shot. <laughs> the question is. Suppose he says yes right now, and December comes, and it's the fifth time he's canceled the wedding. I, I know. I think about that all the time. I just, it's been so much, I can't trust him anymore from what he says. Exactly. I mean, how do I know? Exactly. All right. Let's find out what Eric's got to say for himself. Eric, come on out. We have a little problem with you. Yeah, I've, heard. I've agreed to help Brandy out. Four times you've backed out of marrying Brandy. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Okay. <laughs> let's start with the let's start All with right. the first one. All right. Um, the first time, I had only known Brandy for three months before she had gotten pregnant. Okay. No, 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 no. That is not my fault. That is a mutual fault. Don't you see? Guys always get blamed for everything, and. and and it is not all my fault. This is a two-way thing. It takes two people to tango here. So that is, not my, that is not all my fault. Yes, I was irresponsible, and so was she, OK? But anyway, the point is that I was feeling like I was getting pressured by my family to get married simply for the fact that she was pregnant. By my family, not her, not His Brandy here. His family would not pressure me if he didn't say that he loved me and wanted to stay with me. Hello. All right, so that's... <laughs> That's number one. Right. What okay. Um, the second time was after he was born, and I mean, I was just, I was, I just felt like I didn't know if it was going to work out or not. I mean, because we were living with my family. Okay. We're talking about me, Brandy, our kid, my mom, my dad, and my two sisters in one household, which makes, you know, for yeah. a very stressful situation. I agree. Okay. Um, so we were fighting a lot, and we just weren't really getting along. And to me, it seemed like to get married then would just be like totally stupid. I agree with that one. If we I couldn't get that. along then, I mean, okay. getting married would be like the dumbest thing in the world. All right, but do. wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> we're... Go with number three. Go with number three. Okay, and number three was because. Isn't that the one where you planned the had the minister and the gown? No, that was number four. Oh, number four. Okay. <laughs> what happened with number three? I think we've m messed up the numbers here. <laughs> it was in December, last December when I was pregnant again. Right. And I said, well, I really want to do it this time because I want to make sure that my second baby is born with mom and dad who's husband and wife. Okay, and then what happened with four? It was, it, was, it was the same stuff all over again. It was just, we were still living with my parents now. We're still living with my parents. Are you living with your parents No, now? we're not. Now we're living by ourselves. Then okay. can I ask why you're not married now? I, no, I want to get married, and I want to get married now. <laughs> Back let me let me ask you a question. <laughs> sure, go ahead. I don't understand why you said yes each time. You know, each time you knew that you were being pressured, knew this, knew that. You said yes and yes, then changed your mind. No. I can yeah. understand you say, not saying yes. I'm, that that was then, my fault. I, yeah, I, 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 admit, I should not have done that at all. I mean, all right, now, Brandy told our producers that Eric's friends are pressuring him not to get married. Is that true? That is very true. Well, and he will deny it to all ends, but I'm not you know, stupid. He thinks that, I have it written across my forehead, and he can just tell me they're not no, saying it. No, I don't it, think you're true. stupid. My friends might say that, but you know, I only care about how I feel, and I, you know, they can say all the, everything they want. I don't care. I only care about how I feel are and about how she feels. Are they pressuring you not to marry? Her? Some of them are, but I mean, it's not like they're all constantly just, you know, don't get married, don't get married. You know, if you get married, you're going to be. That's but it doesn't matter you. how many times you say it. If you say it once, you're going to remember. Well, yeah. so what? It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter. All right, so you I have every intention of marrying her. Oh, yeah. Is that correct? Yes. How do we know that you are not going to back out another time? Well, this is the reason. Okay, the last time that I backed out of getting married was because, I went, like I said, we were um, still living with my parents, okay? And I wanted to get moved out with just us and see how we got along then without having all the stress of living with my parents and everything. Because it is very stressful in that situation. I mean, can, I, can I break through all of this? Sure. Do you, this is a very beautiful young lady. Do you love her? Yes, I love her as well. I know she's beautiful. Do you love 
love him? Oh, very much. Yeah. Do you want to marry her? Yes. Do you want to marry him? Yes. Great. What is the date? I will do it. Yeah. I do it tomorrow. You're on national television. You got 200 and some odd people here. That's right. Let's hear what the family has to say. This is Brandy's sister, Jessica, and uh, Destiny is whose friend? Both of our friends. Both of our okay. friends. Okay. Woo! Okay, Destiny, we're going to start with you. Now, what we're doing is a little dangerous. Tell me why. What happened to you? Um, I forced um, my husband to marry me, and everybody was forcing, and the families and everything like that, and I live with my mom now. It's not even been a year. Really? Just a little over a year. So putting the pressure on was the wrong thing? Was the wrong thing. I, I, we, everyone forced it. Look, look, uh, I stayed with them for like two months recently, and I saw a lot, and they both need to work on what they need for themselves, okay? They need to say, what do I want for myself, and what do I need to do for myself? Because if you can't take care of yourself and what you need and want, you can't take care of another person. I, I'm taking care of my family. On, you know, you need to think, okay. It's not just me anymore. It's me, it's Nicholas, it's Jared. Right, it's exactly. Awesome. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. You need to you need to have everything okay with yourself so that when, you know, you have this issue. Well, wait, wait, wait. do you think they're not meant for each other? Let, let's, let's, we're, let's put the cards on the table. I don't know, I don't know. I think they well, love each other. Well, now, come on, tell the they, truth. What do you feel in your gut? I think that they love each other. They, they, would, they each could other. do good with each other, but they're not ready yet. They're not All right. ready. When will they are living together? They have two children. In your opinion, when will they be ready? In your opinion, I think they need. They, they have a lot of things they need to get straight. Okay. I know. How can she say when I'm going to be ready? You don't know how I feel. You don't even know. Everybody, okay, everybody has all, their problems. Okay. You know, it doesn't have to. Do be you perfect. understand my my position? Right. Right. I don't want. I. All I see is chaos. I don't want to be responsible for one more okay, marriage. Right. That, although, in my heart, once you've got the two kids, mm -hmm. and once you've made the commitment, you work your problems out. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's just me. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know beans when I got married, and we grew up together and learned things about each other. But so. it would be better to learn things but, now and then not to get married and then have it not work out and you've already been married. Try and work right. things That's out so the marriage so lasts. Honestly. We know we want to discover each other together for the rest of our lives, not just, you know, we can stay together, live together forever, but there's no commitment. There's nothing special or bonding. Here's what we're going to do. Eric, yeah. look, this is just a television show. <laughs> Let me be honest with you. You can come. I want you to go back and I want you to think, really think hard about it, the two of you. Right. If you want us to marry you, either on the air, off the air, or whatever, I'll be glad to do it. If there's a doubt in your mind that you don't want to do it, no problem. Absolutely no problem. Mm -hmm. So you go back and you think about it, all right? Coming up next. We have a mother who says that her daughter is throwing her life away, waiting for her jerky boyfriend to marry her. <laughs> now, here's the problem. Mother lives one end of the country, hasn't seen her daughter in two years, has not met the boyfriend. She's going to meet him now for the first time ever. Uh, this is another case where the girl wants to get married, and the guy is like, no. All right? And this time, the mother says he's not worthy of you. So let's meet them when we come back.
it's hard as heck to keep Amy, our senior producer, out of that green room. And I, I, I think they should be in there alone talking things over. The audience, by the way, thinks I'm wrong. You do, yeah. don't you? The whole audience thinks I'm dead wrong. They say I shouldn't leave them alone. All right. I want you to meet Ch Cheryl. You, ch you haven't even met me and you're crying. What, what, what's happening here? Okay, this is Cheryl. Cheryl, let me look over everything that's going on. Cheryl lives in Tennessee and her daughter Amanda lives in California. So she feels like she hasn't seen her in how long? Over two years. So you feel like you really lost touch with her, right? Oh, no, we're on the phone. I even have an 800 number, so she can call me anytime. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> she calls me at 2.30 in the morning to have the baby talk to me at two and a half months old. So we stay in touch by phone. But, but it's such a long distance, Tennessee to California, I know. And my daughter is my daughter. I know, forever. What's wrong? Is she wants to get married to this guy? She is so dedicated to her baby and him. And she's, wait till you meet her, she's so incredible. But what's wrong? Why, uh, are you, do you not like, I'm not quite getting the message. Do you not like him? I've never met him. Uh, never met him? Uh, no, he's. What does she want? She wants to be married and have a family. And what do you think? I think that she needs to tell him to put up or shut up, work on this relationship. She's living with his family while he's bartending, wanting to be an actor, living with these other bachelors, going off to Las Vegas. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. She and the baby are living with his family. His family, seven people in a little two-bedroom apartment. Now he's, he's living somewhere else? Mm-hmm. Why is he? Who's he living with? Uh, some other bachelors who want to be actors. Why? Is there a reason? Is there a reason? Um, Shh, let me find out about this. He says, now she's going to college to be a school teacher. But he says she has no ambition and no goals. Yeah. But I don't understand, if they've had a baby together and she wants to marry him, why does he live with some bachelor guys out there? I agree. She I did. agree. Yeah. Amanda, can you come out and say hello to Mom? It's like two things happening at once, right? So. Have you heard what your mother's been saying about you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What? You, talk to me. What's What's with you? Well, the, she thinks that you know I'm waiting for Brian. Brian is my best friend. Except my, for me. <laughs> <laughs> except for my mom. You know, um, he's my best friend. He, we were in a relationship, and it, it was good for a while. You know, we, you know, the blame doesn't lie entirely on one person. It takes, it takes two people to be in a situation. Sure. But here's what I'm asking. You have a child with Brian. How old's the baby? She'll be four months old. Oh. Do you want to marry? It? You got to forgive me. I'm old fashioned. I think you should have gotten married and then had the baby. I agree. I agree. Do you want to marry Brian? It will happen eventually. Not now, not in the next year. It, eventually. I, I totally agree that... Um, He's not going to marry you, man. I totally agree with him. It'll happen. A year or so, maybe two. You know, we should have done it um, in the right steps. We should have, you know, met worked on our careers, right. you know, gotten married, had the baby, however, you know, I can't say things happen, that's not an excuse. That's, um, Mandy, you're just doing out. this to cover up your own pain, you want to rationalize everything, she's real good at this. No. She's real good at this. No. You need to get on with your life and make him prove to you that he deserves you. Yeah. 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 Is she beautiful? Is she all together? Oh, 
two is so together. The thing is, is that, you know, I'm getting on with my life. I'm not waiting around. He doesn't need to prove anything. Do we you ever go out? On. Do you ever go out? Yes. When? When I feel like it. When I, you To know, the mall with her baby. No. Does the, he go out? Does he go out? He's out. Well, all... he works in a bar. He works in a bar. So, you know, he's got his friends. For a year and a half, I kept him at home. I kept him at home and I made demands that were fair. He works six nights a week. He works six nights a week and on his only night off, Tuesday night, he has to go out with the boys playing cards and drinking. No, 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 no. That's he got a DUI on the way home, rolled their car one night, didn't get home till 9, 30, 10, 30 in the morning. I'm sorry, Andy. He doesn't deserve you. Well, Amanda, you told our producers that deep down you believe that if you give Brian, this is your words, if you give Brian enough time, he'll grow up, he'll come around, and he'll marry you. Do you feel that way? I do. Okay. That, not necessarily getting married, but we will get back together. I can guarantee it. Okay. Cheryl has never met Brian. Let's introduce them. Brian, come on out. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Hi, Brian. <laughs> There's some hostility. I'm sorry, what? I'm feeling some hostility. Um, a tad is bit. It, is it the audience no, that's upset? No, no. Okay, what's upsetting? Um, upsetting well, you? see, Brian works six nights a week, not by choice. I agree. Um, Brian's one night a week out. I believe I've probably went out with my friends and played cards maybe two or three times. Okay. It wasn't every night. She's taking isolated incidences in and making them the norm. Okay. And it's not the case. All right. Then maybe she was misled? Um, no, I don't think that it's that she was misled. I think she just chose to know what she wanted to know, to realize what she wanted to realize. That's right. But can you understand? I knew what Mandy told me. Can you understand how mothers feel about their daughters. I mean, it's probably is do you have a son or a daughter? We have a daughter. Do you if anybody ever did anything to her, you'd feel awful, wouldn't you? Yeah, but so I have done nothing to her. Move anymore. it ahead if you I know. But there's two sides as you said to every story. Move it ahead a while. All she wants is the best for her I child. I just want Mandy right? to be happy and she's not. She calls me crying and she doesn't know what to do. She's living in this house with seven people while you're living you, that, that's another thing. It is not a two-bedroom apartment. It's a five-bedroom house with seven people. Since I when? Share a room. Since Mom, when? I've always told you that. I don't see. She takes what she hears and Maybe she turns it around house. to suit herself. Five-room house. No, it's five bedrooms. You know, um, my mom, like Brian said, she takes one thing that I tell her and she blows it completely out of proportion. And Mandy, you know that isn't true. That is well, for all of my life. All of my life, she has done that. All of my life. And in answer to your question, um, we're not living together because we're not together. Tell me what you meant by what you just said. We're not we're, together. We're, we're not together. We're not engaged. We're not boyfriend and girlfriend. We're parents, but we're, we're parents. not together. We broke up. We broke up. Yes. Okay. I'm now getting it. We broke up. You, you know you never told me that you broke up. Yes, I did. You know, my mom How said do you some, feel about this? About us breaking up? Yeah. I would rather that we were back together, but we both have a do lot of growing up to him? do. Do you love him? Absolutely. Okay. She loves him totally. Do you love completely. her? Yes. Do you love her in the way you love a wife, or do you just love her because she's the mother of your child? Um, at this moment, I, I have not reconciled that. I couldn't give you an answer. Fair enough. And I, you know, I still haven't responded to this lady's question about saving money for my child's future. Um, what I'm doing for my child's future is um, going to school five days a week and working six nights a week. Um, I don't sleep at night. I sleep an hour or two. I go to school. I come home, sit for an hour at the most, change, go to work. Come home from work at two in the morning, study, 
get up and go back to school. Brian, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate your goals. But when you tell Mandy that she has no goals or ambitions and you can't handle that. But the thing is, is that for a long time I didn't. Being a wife and the mother is you know the what? best goal in the Mandy. world. Mandy. But that's not going to put food on the table now. Mandy, let me, let me tell you something. Maybe, maybe in a way I agree with mother to this extent. If you are broken up as boyfriend and girlfriend, which is fair enough, Maybe you shouldn't be living with his family. Maybe you should be somewhere where, yeah, maybe you should be with your mother or maybe you should be by yourself. Uh -huh. I'm or working something. on that. I'm working on that. You because know, you it's... see, if this relationship is over or if you're just going to have a relationship of two parents with a child, even though you don't want it to be this way, you should probably have another place mm -hmm. to, to be on your mm -hmm. own, make your own goals, support your child, mm -hmm. and go on your own way. It's just a matter of time. I don't plan on living with his family for the rest okay. of the baby's life. But every time she says she's going to start dating or she's going to move to Tennessee, then he tells her how beautiful she is, how well, hot she but is. But I think well, that's I'm not I'm fair. sorry, what? Wait, I'm I sorry. Don't think that's Excuse fair. me, what? You know, Brian is not the reason why I changed my mind, Mom. That's not it. You know, right. I, I'm an adult. I'm an adult. I make my own decisions. That's fair enough. Let's see the baby. Can we? It would be nice yeah. to. This is a four month old baby. Is this the is this the first time you've seen your grandchild? Yes. Aww. All right. She's All right. talked to me on the phone. <laughs> what we'll have to do uh, is uh, let them have some private time together. Now we have arranged for Amanda and the baby to fly home to Tennessee mm -hmm. to be with you for a short visit before she has to go back home to California. <laughs> Next, it's an ultimatum for this couple. See, it can happen both ways. Here, we're going to meet a man who keeps proposing to his girlfriend. She says she doesn't want to ruin their relationship by getting married. Today, he says, if she comes here and turns me down one more time, we're through. So are we going to have wedding bells or separate flights home for this couple? We'll find out next. Today we've been talking to young women whose family and friends are telling them to wake up, the guy is never going to marry you. In one case they may be wrong, in the other case it turns out they may be right. Now meet a guy who does want to get married desperately. This is Dennis, he has been dating his girlfriend Joy for two years and says it's time to make it official. Joy says things are fine the way they are and doesn't want to ruin a good relationship by getting married. Now. Dennis, I think that sometimes we get hung up on statistics. The problem is that she says you've been married three <coughs> times already. Now, one, wait a minute, one oh, wife died. You know, done. I never go by these statistics. My dear Aunt Barry's been married four times and widowed four times. You were widowed once, once correct? Right. Okay. S and you were divorced twice. Right. Why are you so eager to get married again? Well, I, I think it's the ultimate respect I can pay to her, you Sally. I, I mean, uh, we do live together in a platonic relationship, and I'm not going to... Uh, I wasn't looking for a roommate, you know, and I don't want to just continue living together Wait, as... wait, I'm a little confused. You're living okay. together in a platonic. You're not having sex. No, we're not having sex. Okay. No, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey. Hey, wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. Ask why. Well, I mean, I think you're right, <coughs> but why? 
well, we're not having sex because I choose not to and she chooses not to, as intelligently. Okay. I mean, we're not, it's not just something we uh, decide not to do for, I mean, it's, I, uh, I've never had a relationship choice, like this. In your, in your choice, is it that you don't want to have sex till you're married? Or you don't want to have sex with well, her, Well, my three previous marriages, or well, two of them anyway, um, it was always sex. Sex was the big thing. And then when the, when the newness wore off, so did Dennis, you know? And I'm not about that this time. Well, you want to make it legal, you want to be a couple, you want to do things that married people do. Why does she not want to marry you? Well, we, do, we are a couple. We do live together. Uh, we do marry things uh, that people do, do things that married people do. But uh, I think she feels it's great. Why, uh, you know, why ruin it? Basically, and that's where, you know, like, and I'm tired of that, though. Okay, all right. Why don't I let her speak for herself? Let's ask her to come on out. Joy, come on out. You were married for almost 20 years. Yes. It, was an un it was the unhealthy relationship. No, the marriage I thought was healthy. I was the super mom that took care of the children, went to all the PTAs, was the good wife. But I did everything for everyone. And, and not then for yourself. Never How knew. long have you been divorced? Are you divorced? Yes. How long have you been divorced? Uh, 10, years. 10 years. But isn't that enough time to have worked on yourself? Well, it is if I would have spent that time, but I spent another seven years <coughs> with in another unhealthy, real unhealthy relationship. Ah, so you, you feel you've been burnt twice? Yes, yes. Okay. Who Are you in love with this lady? Yes, I am. Very do you much. want to marry her? Yes, I do. Are you in love with this man? Yes. Yeah. Now we got a problem. <laughs> I thought. I thought she was going yeah. to say no, in which case he'd go his way and she'd go her way. Well, Sally, you know, it's, on me, you know, it's, it's been tough. What do you want to do? I, I, I've got to basically make a decision in my life, and I'm, my decision is... <laughs> All right, we are still, we're going to watch. We're still waiting to find out where are we. We've got Eric going through with marrying Brandy. Has he decided to or not? Stay tuned to find out. Here's where we stand. I am. <laughs> I promise. How long did I promise Eric that he had to make a decision whether he wanted to get married? I give him what 20 minutes, something like that. I do not know yet what he is going to say. So if you can put that on hold, I have the time to marry him if he decides he wants to get married before or after. Let's talk meanwhile with therapist Ginger Grancanola. Hello, Ginger. Hi, Sally. Terrific to see you again. think about what you've been seeing here today? Well, I think um, we need to separate the idea of what love is, what a relationship is, and what a marriage is. Love is not just the feeling, it is the consistency of kind, honest, and respectful actions and behaviors between the two. And that can happen when we have, and I'm, I, I really appreciate the word that you used a couple of times, old-fashioned, when we use an old-fashioned process of courting. And I think in some cases, like we see here, that, uh, that aspect of the, of the relationship then growing into a marriage has actually been missing. Yeah. Uh, it has been missing because a child came too soon. It has been missing because there are personal problems which don't allow two individuals to relate. And in this, 
courting aspect, what happens is the young people can then stay an individual, hold their own identity, and then make plans for your life. And it doesn't mean that that's going to be the promise either, but you got a better shot if you have been able to be your own person first and court Absolutely. and then go into the relationship. What about Amanda? <laughs> Her mother says that no matter what Amanda says, she knows that Amanda still believes that Brian will eventually marry her. I looked in Brian's eyes, and I'm not so sure. I don't yeah. think he's interested yeah. in no. I, I agree with Do you. Do we think I, he's I interested? Believe, I believe that Amanda believes that they have a connection, a feeling of love. But this is not a relationship where marriage is going to be the result. agree that uh, Amanda needs to remove herself from his family's home because his family is taking on the responsibility that he should have. I, I also believe with respect he is getting on with his life and doing good things, etc. And maybe somewhere in the future, but time has passed and she needs to attend to her life and her baby. And perhaps they're right. They are just parents, and let's let this good friendship be good parents. Yeah. And I don't think it'll be a marriage. Let me add to this. When you want to move away, he has no claim on you, no claim on anything. He just has a claim on his child, mm -hmm. and you have the right to say, I'm sorry, I'm going to another part of California. If it's California, I like. And he shouldn't drag you back in that with the hope that maybe the relationship will work. You both need a lot of time apart, yes. a lot of time apart. I mean, really apart, apart. not the same <laughs> thing. What about this couple? Well, I think in this situation, what has happened is uh, their lives allowed them to get involved with people and not ever defining what does it take to be a marriage. They weren't really whole people prior to that, and it takes two individuals. And I also um, give them great respect and credit for the fact that they are becoming whole from inside out. And I think that, that there is a love here. And, and I think that they actually are a support system. And underneath, I think uh, that time will tell. I sort of have uh, some good feelings that they're going to stay together. I do, too. I do, too. We'll take a yeah. break. We're getting down to the wire. Will Brandy and Eric walk down that aisle? I honestly do not know. I'll go and find out and come back and say. All right, now let me see. What do you think? I think I'm ready. You think you're ready? Yeah. Is he ready? That's <laughs> I the question. So. Is he? Do you think so? I think so. Eric! <laughs> Eric! <laughs> All right. Director Kit, uh, your sister's going to stand up for you. Yes, she All is. right. And the minister's name? Kit, dim the lights. Kit, dim the lights. Kit, dim the lights. Go ahead, dim the, dim the house lights. Let's go. Romance is play, but true love is intention, and it is your intending to love for life that we are celebrating today. Would you like to give up your flowers quickly? And uh, turn to your sister. I mean, turn to Eric. That would be <laughs> the comic relief. Eric, do you choose Brandy to share your life with you? And do you promise to love and respect her, to help and forgive her, and to instill hope in her for as long as you both shall live? I do. And Brandy, do you choose Eric to share your life with you? And do you dedicate yourself to him in sickness and in health, in joy and in sorrow, in good times and in bad, so long as you both shall live? I do. 
The rings, please. Thank you very much. Eric, would you please take Brandy's ring and as you place it upon the finger of your bride as a token of your love and promises, repeat after me. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. Thank you. Now, Brandy, as you place the ring on Eric's finger as a token of your love and promises, repeat after me. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. Please hold hands together. Brandy and Eric, inasmuch as you have consented together in marriage before the world, have pledged your faith and declared your unity, I declare that you are husband and wife. Please. <laughs> kiss each other. The bride cuts the cake. Hold the I don't know what you do with it. I could use some plates. Well, to the very, you know, really the very best, really. And we're going to be watching what's going to happen to you and to you. See you next time.